I have made $143 off selling one digital download several times. Now, this is not the only digital download that I have made this kind of revenue on. This only took me around five minutes to make. This is why selling digital downloads is such an amazing business. So as you can see, the revenue I have made on this item in particular is $143.28. Over the time this listing has been active, I have made 48 sales. Now, if you were to divide my revenue versus my sales, it would not be the price of the item. And that is because I love to run sales. And the last stat is that I have had 511 views on this listing. Now it is exciting part. I am going to show you the listing that I am referring to in this video. And it is this size chart. Let me describe to you why I think this listing has done so well. There are a few different components to having a high selling digital download. If you don't know, selling digital downloads is really competitive. So you need to make sure that you have a few things on your side, stats and the design. So those are the two things that I'm going to dive into right now. The tool that I use to make sure that my items are going to sell is Sale Samurai. Let's dive onto my computer so I can show you that real quick. When I am doing product research, the first thing I do is go straight onto Etsy and I use Sale Samurai's Chrome extension. So how to use a Chrome extension is you go onto Chrome and you start typing in the keyword that you want to search. And on the right side, you'll see all of those circles just kind of loading and once they load you're gonna click into the 500 more once you've done that they are gonna give you a bunch of different keywords with the search volume and the competition ideally you want to try to find one search volume per month versus one competition or if you can't find that something that is pretty close to that so you'll see that the mock-ups it is a 10,000 competition versus a thousand search volume so that one you are not going to be found very easily so you just want to keep scrolling and just keep looking through all of these different keywords to try to find one that is pretty close guys it is really this easy you are just going to be looking through the search volume versus the competition that is why having softwares like sales samurai is very useful when you're trying to grow your etsy shop because if i didn't have this i really would not know about any of these spelling mistakes i wouldn't know if if these keywords are doing fairly well um, so I just really cannot emphasize enough why it is important to have a software like Sales Samurai and I just absolutely adore I love that word adore Sales Samurai so once I have done that and I have found a keyword that I like I am gonna go over to their website so Sales Samurai has a Chrome extension and then a website and while I'm logging into the website I kind of want to go over a discount code for you all Sales Samurai has generously gave my viewers 20% off the life of your subscription there are two ways that you can apply this code the first way is by using my code Brit 20 it is case sensitive so make sure you use all lowercase letters and then the second way you can apply this code is by clicking the link in the description of this video okay so now that the keyword has loaded you will see that the etsy search volume per month is 451 and the etsy competition is 578 so now you might be saying to yourself whoa that's not one to one but it is close enough and at this point i would go ahead and try out a few listings seeing if they're selling over time and if they sell over time making more and more and more Another cool thing about Sales Samurai is you can see this Google search volume. So I actually do receive a decent amount of sales through Google. And the way I'm tracking this is that I am getting offsite ads. I've always been told that you want to join the market, not create a market. Because if you are just going to be joining the market, then you already know that people are looking up this item and purchasing it. But if you are going to be creating the market, people are not looking the item up and you are going to have to do a lot of marketing to convince people to purchase that item. So that is why doing this research prior to making the item is so important. But another thing that is important is that you subscribe to my channel. Also, I would appreciate it if you would like this video. It shows me that you are interested in this kind of videos. 
If you do like this video and I get enough likes on this video, I will show you another one of my top selling listings. Now let's move on to the design side. One thing I always say on this channel is that you want to compare your listings to your competitors. Now you want to be very harsh on yourself and that doesn't sound very nice, but if you scroll through and you see your listing and you're not attracted to it, then other buyers are not going to be attracted to it as well. What I recommend is going onto Etsy and typing in a keyword that your buyers would type in and then look at all of the listings that appear on the top. Now you wanna be careful and not look at any of the ads by Etsy sellers. Now those are probably really good top selling listings. However, you wanna look at the ones below that because those are the ones that are ranking really high in the search organically. So when I do that, I see a lot of very simple designs designs that have a lot of neutrals in it that aren't really specified to one gender. Maybe they have some shapes in it like arches, squares, stuff like that. Very aesthetically pleasing. And so when I am going to be creating my design, I want to make sure that I am adding all of those criteria that I just said into the design. So I might even go one step further and just study it for a half an hour or 15 minutes, whatever time you have, and just writing down on a notepad what I am seeing. Because when I'm creating my design, then I'm gonna be able to look back on that notepad and say, yes, it has this, yes, it has that, Oh, it doesn't have that. Let me go add that into my design. Now I know this sounds so silly and just like one extra step, but I can assure you that it is going to make sure that your design is going to be a lot more thought out. The last thing I wanna dive into is what is working for me. So when I do my market research, I look at the stats and I look at the designs, I am seeing that size charts and color charts are performing pretty well. That is because a lot of people that are going into the mock-ups kind of market, they are making mock-ups and they're not necessarily doing the size charts and the color charts. Now, when I say this, I do know that the competition might get a lot harder, but I am okay with that. I'm okay if I have a little extra competition, if it is helping someone else out. Another thing that does really well for me is having simple fonts. On the size chart, you will see that it has a very simple font. It's not too fancy. It's generally just really easy to read. When I first started selling size charts, I made them really fancy. I overdid the design part of my digital downloads and they did not sell. So over time, I have kind of looked through other listings. I have figured out what is selling what's not selling and over time this has proven for my Etsy shop time and time and time again that people want simple they don't want anything too intricate if it is hard to read they might just scroll past it and not even give your listing the time of day another thing that does really well for me is having a neutral background so in this digital download, the background is gray, the box is white, everything is very neutral. And I have tried to create digital downloads that have pink, have blue, have green, have just more of a fun vibe to them. However, those have not sold like at all really, but not even close to what my new digital downloads have. The last thing is that people love shapes. I don't know why, but shapes are just very eye attracting. I am assuming, I don't know that. I have not studied that, but whenever I had shapes onto my digital downloads, they sell more. That could be a rectangle, a square, a circle, an arch. Now, these are some of the things that have been working for me. Now, I'm not going to say they're going to work for everyone, so don't get that confused. What I always do recommend is you do some experimenting. So I want you to list a few items, see what sells, what doesn't sell, and what sells, you need to double down, triple down, quadruple down. Do as many listings as possible because if people are liking it, they want variations. So what I have done in the past is I have duplicated these digital downloads and created them in colors and seeing if people are interested in them in colors. Now, in this video, you've clearly already heard that they were not interested in it, but just because they're not interested in it for my Etsy shop does not mean they're not interested in it for your Etsy shop because every single niche is a little bit different. 
that is all I have for you guys today. If you like this video, give it a big like. If I get enough likes, like I mentioned previously, I will create this video, but for a different digital download that's selling pretty well right like today. Like I have gotten a few of them today. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you all, and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye-bye for now.